Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test Tube Plus. I am Trace. This is episode four of six on the internet. Internet's big. So we broke this into a bunch of different topics for you, and by now we've covered a lot of different stuff. We've talked about how the internet works, we talked about where it started, we've even talked about internet security a little bit, so make sure you check those out. Whistleblowers have shed light onto some of the NSA and CIA's digital campaigns. So this next bit we got from looking at documents on WikiLeaks, so take that as it will. But it's alleged that the United States has been digitally spying on everybody. Like, everybody. The NSA allegedly intercepted all French corporate contracts and negotiations valued at more than $200 million in many different industries, like telecommunications, electrical generation, gas, oil, nuclear and renewable energy, and environmental and healthcare technologies. NSA sucking up all that information. The U.S. has allegedly been spying on Japanese cabinet officials, banks, and companies, including Mitsubishi. The U.S. has allegedly tapped the phone of German Chancellor Angela Merkel and her close advisors and did so for years and spied on the staff of her predecessors. And these are not even threats. These are just our allies that we're spying on. And if this is true, imagine what we might be doing to our enemies. I mean, that's, that's huge. The internet has undoubtedly changed warfare. You can thank social media for that in part. ISIS puts things like beheading videos on YouTube I was actually in one of ISIS's promotional videos because it was about media bias and Test Tube News talks about ISIS a lot, so they used some of our footage. We talk about ISIS all the time, they noticed, so they used it in their social media. And they use their social media as a weapon and also as a recruiting tool. And the U.S. State Department says that they are exceedingly good at it. But aside from all that horrific stuff, Egypt's liberation was also bolstered by Twitter and Facebook. The Arab Spring in general used a lot of social media and a lot of the internet to help spread the awareness and the word. So even when Egypt blocked Twitter, a group of engineers from Google, Twitter, and Say Now created a voice-to-tweet service. An Egyptian could call a specific number, record their voice, and then the system would tweet that for them, keeping the revolution alive online, even though they had blocked the websites. Thanks to the internet, we are no longer gate-kept bystanders to the news, reading reports days later after a number of journalists and editors have looked at it. Instead, we can now witness the action on the ground in real time and even influence and comment on what's happening. Whether that's good or bad is a whole other conversation, but now, because of the web, it is a two-way conversation, with activists from all over the world able to participate, spread the word, and help each other's movements grow. That's all because of the internet. A side effect to this is a lesser need for impartial embedded journalists, which again is another conversation that could be good or bad. But now folks can be empowered to share their perspective and be part of movements around the planet. And this is rather than having their words relayed back to other countries through the gatekeeping mass media. In the end, cyber war is already upon us, but it is not the only way the internet is used in international conflicts. Because of the internet, Americans may now be more conscious of the world outside of our borders. And social media plays a big role in that. That can be scary. You know, it can raise people's levels of stress and it makes people feel more threatened on a day-to-day -day basis. But if you think about it, it shouldn't. It should make us feel more connected and more involved in those things. That being said though, the survivalist movement is in full swing. Some people think the world is gonna end like soon because they aren't used to seeing so many stressful things around them and in the world at large. And unfortunately, unlike 50, 60 years ago, no big political entity can call a major newspaper editor and ask them to cool it and not publish a story because the fourth estate just doesn't control the national conversation the way that they used to. We are now more educated because of the internet than ever on who our enemies are, but also who our friends are. And even North Korea's voice is being heard these days, despite the fact that they are pretty much irrelevant. There's more public outcry and awareness of national conversations because of the internet, like Black Lives Matter, that movement, and conversations over police brutality and shootings around the country. These things happen and they are able to be talked about way more so because the media may have moved on, but the people haven't, and the people have the internet. It's almost like everyone nowadays is forced to have an opinion on so many things because social media brings them right to our doorstep. The internet, social media, and everything that comes with that are obviously changing our world in an enormous and some would say incredible ways, which is why 
it's a good time to thank our sponsor, Intel. Intel creates the breakthrough technologies that make these amazing experiences possible. And tomorrow, we're talking about the future of the internet. So please, subscribe to TestTube Plus so you can come back tomorrow and watch that. And click here now to watch yesterday's episode if you didn't see that. Thanks for watching TestTube Plus. I'm Trace. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>